I think this one might be my favorite yet. Look at that. Art cop Yusuke on the case. Nobody betrays your degeneracy. All right. Are you admiring my morphophysiology? It must be frightening to stand in the shadow of this racial pinnacle. Be calm, I'm sandwich. You are not in danger because you are not a threat to me. You reek of it. An invisible sword of Alhul emerges from your throat. Alcohol? You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. Smell your breath. Kim, is it really so bad? It's not good. It's not. <laughs> Have we not had a drink for two days? Two days we haven't had a drink, and it's still that bad? Occidental upload group B4 is done giving orders around here. The influence of the ham sandwich race is waning. The ham sandwich race? Intimidating this guy is not gonna work whatsoever. What's the pun of ham sandwich? What is that? That's something. I feel like I feel like I feel like I'm so close to understanding. What is it? Your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness and with frivolous pop culture. Oh man, I'm feeling pretty called out right now. You will be superseded. Isn't that right, babe? It is, baby. Yeah, you know it. I don't like you, Measureheads, babe. You're right about all this. Now I just need you to cooperate with me as a police officer. Enough with this begging. You should leave the stage of history with dignity. The walls will be lined with bottles of Al Ghul. Your beloved, Beverly. Inside, we will store the odds to homosexuality you call art, and your microcephalic skull. Whoa, 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 whoa. No one insults art in front of the art cop. That That is my job. You could internalize Measurehead's race theory, it would enrich you rhetorically. Um. I really don't want to. Physical instrument, formidable. Knock him out. 3% <laughs> chance. <sighs> oh, so close. What? You must be out of your mind, degenerate drunk. The pressure on your hand becomes unbearable. Say it. I am a degenerate alcoholic. I am a cop. Fuck you. The words to the song have changed. Say, I am a violent drunk. No, I won't fucking say anything. He releases your hand. Now leave before you humiliate your homoerotic organization any further. So it was. You surmounted the harbor wall in a display of athletic prowess to reach my superior, then had him give me an order. I salute your cunning, and I will remove the body from the tree with my bare hands. You're so noble, Measurehead. There's a but. But <laughs> while I'm gone, someone will stand guard on the bridge. That someone needs to be you. He turns to Kim, both of you. Lieutenant, what if we don't want to do that? This is the uncomfortable result of not taking down ourselves. I can live with the compromise. Alright, so this is the craziest motherfucker yet. She turns to you. So you guys, like... You guys are like cops or something? Apparently so. Cool, I like men with guns and power. The woman twirls her hair. I'm Katya, by the way. Jean-Luc must be really tearing it up over there. I wish I could see it. I also wish I could see it. The corpse has been removed from the tree. He brushes wooden flakes off his hands. Stand down and congratulate yourself. You have sided with race victory today. Thank you for your cooperation, Measure Head. Farewell, Ham Sandwich. You are a union man from now on. Let's anger the giant. Yeah, but you still serve him. How does that factor into your life? Mr. Claire is a man of vision and means. Your petulant individualism has only contributed to your race failure. It is lax and moronic. Well, that backfired. Individualism is my jam. Jam. Individualism. You have gotten these ideas from degenerate youth culture. Have you not? You have picked them up from rock and roll songs. I'm not surprised you enjoy it so much. This has happened to many of the side products of the inevitable cultural victory of the Seminese race. The Seminese are the South Island race. Haplogroup A4A. The rightful masters of the Insulidian Archipelago. We are the future. That is all you need to know. I'm a descendant. The narrow streets of Olunbior are with me in my genetic dreams, so you did not come for the islands. 
No, he cranes his head. I have heard about it on the radio. I don't think anything about this. We're wasting our time having this conversation. I agree, Kim, but let's let's push forward. Your pedomorphic friend is right. You should leave here with your tail between your legs, contemplating race extinction. I am an immovable obstacle. Know anything about this mug? Show him the mug. He does not so much as glance at the object. Know anything about it? This your kind of thing. Stop showing me your pathetic cup. I have no interest in it. Why are you not with the Hardy Boys? And these so-called hardy boys are an effeminate clique of bodybuilders their company is spiritually degrading they have recently fallen under the influence of a possible of a possibly sexually perverted female vagrant and a narcotics peddler it's shameful what are those tattoos of yours supposed to mean racists are generally not very good examples of their race he gestures toward the loryman down the street kind of like that line uh welcome to rubbishall you hear him yell at a red-haired head woman visiting the frit nearby you must think redheads are immigrants. <laughs> I'm not like them. I have taken the trouble to permanently draw a phrenological grid on my skull and features. This should dispel any doubt. The drawings are precise and look true to their pseudoscientific ambitions. One thing, however, it is not entirely free of throwbacks in this phylogenic tree. His large jaw, for example, could be a trait indicative of criminalism. Also, his earlobes could be smaller. Are you sure? I mean, that jaw is clearly an atavistic stigmata. That atav atavistic stigmata makes pussy say yes plenty. That's a line. Babe, thanks. The tattoos on his stone face briefly form a smile, but I got this. Physical instrument. Bested him in craniometrics. Nice, now we have an 8% chance. Eventually we'll get it. Finish game. Finish game. Uh. Alright, well, this was a fun game. <sighs> well, shit. Okay, so I can't reload without just completely um, turning it off. Alright. Hey, now we get a chance to accidentally save scum. Okay, so I like the world building, but I gotta be honest, and maybe this is like, this is like brain, brainlet tier bullshit. I feel like it's too much. I feel like, I feel like if, if you're not supposed to piece it together, you're not supposed to understand it, then it's fine. It's just kind of background noise. It's fine. I'm enjoying it. But I feel like, I feel like it might be too much. If it's just supposed to be background noise, then fine. That's great. Do we want to conceptualize? Does this unlock a thought and we don't have to use it? Fuck it. Let's do it. Uh, ask what kind of races are there first. Classification is core to the stuff. Measure head. I am new to this world. Help me understand its races. I need to know what kind of different races are there. Do you? The lieutenant looks at you. Whisper, this is for the thing. What thing? We already got in the harbor. You just want to hear about races, don't you? There are three categories of race. Type A, the heroic races. Type B, the servile races. And the vile CF race. Cauldron of peder pederasty? pederasty? Which one do you need education on? Type A. Those are the Seminese and the Occidentals, Osid excluding the Mon, of course. A receding genetic pool has led the Mon wearing wooden clogs on their feet and little green tassels on their hats. Wait, who exactly are the Mon? The Orangees? My people simply call them Mon. In some municipalities of Orangee, people do wear shoes made of wood to street parades. Green, orange, and even yellow tassels have also been seen on hats. The Mon are proof that you can have too much Occidental racial purity and tassel-centric culture. <laughs> In, re <laughs> in reading has led to a lactose intolerance of race whom no one can take seriously. Okay, got it. Who are the type A then, in your view? The Vespertines and Messenaeans of Vesper and Messina, the ancient Meteorans, the Surinese, and even the North Koenigsteiner Steiners all have type A race pr propensities. The other large Mondial civilization, the Mesk, are too yellow and violent and ex expansionist. Fuck but they have a glandular problem. <laughs> he draws his finger across his face. The fact that he's in all caps just makes it worse for some reason. I don't know why. The all caps is just like, what the fuck is this word? Okay, I, I, can I, can I, I want to back out. I, Jack, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. I, I, I want to unsubscribe to cat facts. 
No more racist facts. I want to unsubscribe to race race facts. Nature was not capable of more. All right, what about the what? Okay, type B. I guess we're committed. Type B are the unheroic races, amorphous non-competitors of the great race, the the coach coach and the vach oliers. They are mud-colored people. Oh God. Yes, to an untrained eye, the Kojo appear white and pinkish, like a ham sandwich, but look into their eyes and you will see, he squints, full of sage wisdom, they are, of a, they are of an indistinct color, and so their skin, unhealthy, muddy, and ashen. What's your YouTube channel, Measurehead? Let's subscribe. You definitely have like 500,000 followers on Twitter. No, no doubt about it. The mysteries of the people of this planet are a tragedy that has played out countless times over. Like a fever dream of skin, hair, and bone. Wake up, naive chess piece. The revolution is fatal familial insomnia, a hereditary prion condition passed from the Kochko to the Occidentals. He pauses in theoretic self-reflection, but not sexually, probably through trade routes and potate acid, the prime component of the potato plant. Enough of type B mediocrity, he, he nods, satisfied with the outcome. The vile C- th that's type B? That, that, that's how you feel about type B? What the fuck is this gonna lead to? What what the what the fuck? Okay, all right, let's strap in. I'm ready. I'm re I'm ready. Let's get banned from Twitch. So type C F are the museum of failed chimeric experiments and tragic maladaptions. They are tortured creatures waiting to be put to sleep. Your morbid interest in them worries me. Yes, better not go into. It. Yep. Now that we've we've been through all types, do I understand advanced race theory? You understand nothing. To solve the great race enigma, you have to first ask yourself, what is the race enigma? You have not even worded the mystery, let alone solved it. Okay, so if we say yes, we unlock a thing and we can read it, but we don't have to we don't have to conceptualize it, right? Yeah. What? You, you okay, fine, fine, fine. Chimeric experiments. Fine, we're doing it, chat. You doing it. You wanna do it? Alright, here we go, we're seeing it. Lesser races like Mosquito, a grotesque mixture of Mesque woman and a Seminese man. Only possible if the mother is Mesk and the father Seminese. The other way around they fail to produce offspring. The Mesk the Mosquito is born sterile like a donkey. He looks to the west ruefully. All they have left to do is ride cus customized motor carriages with hydraulic <laughs> Listening to aggressive El Mariachi music to vent their important despair. This is what he hates more than anything? It seems likely that two human beings produce genetically sterile offspring. You are right. You have misunderstood. You lack basic final, final, phylogenetic education. Any more? Then there is, he pauses dramatically, the Semino Koji Chimera. <gasps> are you sure you wish to know of the Semino Koji Chimera? It is not an aesthetic sight. Yes. Racial scientists have toyed with the idea of crossing the Seminese with a coach co to produce a super worker of Seminese strength and grad servility. No Seminese man can maintain an erection in the suffocating <laughs> potato stench of a coach co woman or kochka. But <laughs> enough, it is it's cruel to entertain ourselves with the deformities of type CF. Yeah. Were there any able, any able body races in education? No, let's discuss something else. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. All right. What's this? We're getting reports of normal, reasonable, temperate, political opinions somewhere in Martinez. Really? After that? Really? Really? You must be mistaken. I'm a real radical. That's me, Mr. Reasonable. Someone's got to keep it sane around here. Yeah, being, being a race realist. That's that's reasonable this is because this is because i keep saying none of the above to political stuff isn't it it's time to become a citizen of the kingdom of conscience it is not a place it is a moment in time that can only arise from in the right circumstances in all of human history it's only been achieved a handful of times how do you bring about those circumstances incrementally <laughs> History's greatest catastrophes have been brought about by people trying to make the world a better place too quickly. Centrist arc begins now. Centrist, centrist. You may never live to see the kingdom of conscience. Your children may not. Even your grandchildren might not. But that's no excuse not to keep working. What rationality? Wait, is the kingdom of conscience really about doing things or just preserving the status quo? Do you believe the status quo is preferable to chaos and bloodshed? Oh no, I said yes. Oh no, I said yes. Wait, are we talking about the game or in real life? <laughs> yes, there you have it. Sometimes holding the line is progress.
The kingdom is difficult to comprehend and even more difficult to describe. The kingdom of consciousness is post-capitalist, post-national. It's also post-industrial, post-ideological, and even post-sexual. Okay, I'm out. Sounds incredible. Alon Z, let's go there right now. I'm off the end. Fuck it. We're everything. Slow down, Mr. Reasonable. Did you miss the part about compromising and taking things slow? When that real democracy kicks in, a long time from now, we are all going to be so much happier. I'd appreciate it if you didn't force us into situations where I may have to shoot random civilians. Because that won't get us anywhere. I'm sorry, Kim. But I was fighting bad, unsavory ideologies. I'm a hero. Can't. Pr We're not here on some political quest. We're here to solve a crime. Don't make the situation any more volatile than it already is. All right, fine. He nods. Let's think of something else. All right. Let's talk to this guy because he's been here for a while. Nice aggression with the native. Don't let the chief fool you next time. You don't need to be up in his face. Leave yourself space to move. What about it? You're right here to, to work. Here to fuck with us? Beat the honest worker down? Fighting for a cause here. Right to work! Right to work! It helps the people see us talking. Cops and strike breakers together. Shows authorities are on our side. Builds confidence. Uh, I'll be going now. <laughs> yeah, alright. Time to head up on the dusty trail. Uh, let's not open the can of worms. Are you a conversation or just a... Uh, welcome to Revachol. He's, he's literally Racist Lorry Driver. That's his name. That's his name. Racist Lorry Driver. Hi, Racist Lorry Driver. <sighs> My grandfather came here from a 3,000-year-old racist isolationist culture, while your ancestors came to this island a mere 300 years ago. All right. Let's have, let's have a fight. Every school of thought and government has failed in this city, but I love it nonetheless. It belongs to me as much as it belongs to you. You tell him. It's He's right. You're undermining our best shot at real self-determination. Oh, come on, man. I just said welcome to Rivachol. It's a lorry driver thing. Yeah, but your name is Racist Lorry Driver. I know exactly what you meant. You think my kind doesn't belong here. Your partner needs backup. Now's your moment to shine. Fucking A, Kim. I've got your back. Give the lieutenant a punch on the shoulder. <laughs> I th Well, I think we all learned something here. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, number two. Number two. I haven't learned anything I didn't know before. The lorry man shakes his head with indignation. I found the smug in the trash. Show it to the man. Yours? What are you hauling? Apples. Sounds like a cover story to me. Look, Ace Detective, I come from a long line of lorry men. Really? We got ancient rights and privileges. Really? He loses patience for explaining it. I'm here to pick up a load of fucking apples, man. Just regular co Coach Co. picked apples. Oh, so they grow apples in Grad? Yep, it's one of their main exports. They grow them down south. Yekokata, a beautiful place. Got great scenic vistas. Yekokata is a desolate wasteland. Yeah, says who? It's literally in the name. Zone of ecological catastrophe. The lorry driver glares at you intently, then shrugs. Then I guess they grow apple- Whoa, a dumb racist? Wow. Then I guess they grow apples somewhere else. You can never really tell with those coach coves. Can I see the apples? Did you miss the part where I said they aren't here yet? Besides, even if I did have some, I wouldn't go putting my nose in them. He looks at you with a strange glint in his eyes. Let's go. I don't want to talk to this guy anymore. I want to see the body down from the from the tree. Just an ornery wall. Nothing to see here. You have a keen aesthetic sensibility. Cindy's artistic impulses are infectious. All right. There's no way we're losing a 72. There's no way. What is this? XCOM? There's no way. Called it because you see it. Finally, this wall is sublime. Look at it. The shadows, the colors. Let the conceptual joy flow into your pupils and blossom to thoughts in your brain. And once you've enjoyed it, nitpick the fuck out of it and hate it because you are an art cop, an art critic, and you hate all art because you can't make art yourself and you're frustrated and need to take it out on the world. All the other walls on all the other houses must make a pilgrimage in order adoration of this, the uncontested pinnacle of wall craft. Color peeled from the very face of God. More! Oh, wall father! Kim, I must paint this wall. Add even more beauty to it. Oh, fuck we are, Yusuke. Huh? First, I know you're tired, Kim, but take another look at this wall. Draw nourishment from its beauty. I must talk to Cindy, get the necessary materials from her. Mm-hmm, sure. Why does Kim just go along with this shit? Cindy, I need some paint. And your brush, too. What for? For art. It's for art, okay? Well, if it's for art, but... Her eyes narrow to slits. What kind of art are we talking about? Impossible attempt to explain your artistic intentions. This is a red track. It cannot be retried, but we must live We must live we have to live 
We have to live. How, how, can, how can we not take a chance? How can we not take a chance? Shit. I'm going to paint a self-portrait, but sort of, you know, from the inside to show people what it's like. You're a real sad sack, you know? You know that? Go ahead then. Just try not to hurt yourself and no self portraits Thanks, Cindy. Pick up the brush. Fuel. He looks at the paint dripping down the wall, then back at her, struck by a sudden realization. That wasn't paint. It was heavy fuel oil marked red for, for use by government vehicles. What do you think I was using? Aquarelles? Can't I just use paint? Are you kidding me? Fuel oil is so much cooler. No way you're disfiguring that beautiful wall with something as pedestrian as ordinary paint. Kim, my friend, would you be willing to sacrifice some of your fuel oil for art? My fuel oil is for my kinema. Use your own fuel if you're unable to contain your artistic impulses, but please leave my kinema out of it. Catch you later, Cindy. Leave. All right, so where are we getting our fuel oil? All right, so apparently there was a conceptualization check with, with Joyce. Let's try that again, because we leveled up our conceptualization, because this is how real life works. Ooh, we can't fail a 97. What is all this? The scent, the sound, the air. What world is this? What world? The fading pearls of her eyes look to the sea. The only one, I suppose, the world of matter and its pale antipode. The camera of her mind glides over the surface of the water. Say nothing. Great bodies of water, forest-covered surfaces, clusters of light where the cities lie. You've seen the montage. We all have. This world is enough, she concludes. It must be. This is the greatest and kindest arrangement the atoms had in them. The best of all possible worlds, indeed. There is a term of endearment they coined for it in the DeLorean century. Oh, that's the centrist century! The... <laughs> Centristry, when humanity was high on this world, discovering more and more of it, these archipelagos included, what is it? Elysium. Elysium, the world needs a term of endearment. Does, there are those who would call it hell. What is hell? A term of hatred that originates like many such things with the mesk petrofas fascists. I don't feel like I, I, I don't feel like I've got, I haven't gotten the whole picture yet. Oh, you want a picture of the world? She raises her finger to her lips. There's no complete set yet, dear. They're having some trouble reaching orbit. How come? Great things are difficult to achieve. For now, we're viewing the world from the inside, sideways. Inside, sideways. What shape is this world, then? It's a donut. We used to think it was a sphere, but that is beginning to look less and less likely by the day. You wouldn't know if know it from the tabloids, but the ORG nations have been launching weather balloons into the lower atmosphere ionosphere since the 30s there's a steadily increasingly trickle of images between the big science big three scientific contributions they're piecing together a dark gray corona a dark gray corona yes a dark gray corona pale covers 72 percent of the surface there are gray flares and prominences even arcs above entire isol isolas the images are blurry but if there was a sphere in there it certainly looks like it fractured a long time ago they say there is a rarefied envelope of matter surrounding the darkened disk of our planet, that is, if we are still living on a planet. Or to speak more plainly, imagine vast swaths of land disrupted by nothingness. I'm sorry, dear, she looks around. It must sound quite terrifying, but this is one of the greatest questions of our time. Maybe when they get our, the complete set together, it will jolt us out of our rut, bring us together, however naive it may sound. Okay, so the planet's fractured and cracked open, and somehow it's our fault. It's our fault somehow, I just know it. A fractured corona doesn't feel like it's going to bring anyone together. You have misimagined it. I don't have the power to convey it to you. To convey to you the effect and geometry of the image, the images that depict our world from below, from below low orbit. It's... She looks up. It's like the crowning of the world. It's insane. Very disco. You'd love it. Well, if you say it's disco... See? Everyone finds something worth holding onto in this world, however wasted its opportunities. Suddenly you're conscious of yourself standing there on whatever this all is, your arms hang down by your sides. The lieutenant observes you both silently, he adjusts his glasses. Alright, that was probably the most, most, um, uh, interesting thing so far. You said pale, what is pale? The pale is not technically speaking part of reality. Yes, lieutenant looks at his watch. Also, I think we've had enough excitement for today. Remember, we have a, cab a cadaver to attend to. Of course, lieutenant, she bows and turns to you. Let's try something else. I don't want to. I want to know what the pale is. I don't think your colleague would appreciate that. He has already been so patient with this whole exercise. Let's continue with something else, all right? She leans against the railing. You can ask about anything else in the world, anything. All right, we have to come back without Kim and probably seduce her. I've played enough video games to know. Ask him to step away while you discuss the pale. <sighs> no! Is what you want to do, but should you? He expressly stated you shouldn't hear about it. What if it renders you mad or catatonic or makes you lose your memory again? 
Yes, she's waiting for another turn. All right, let's do a spare decor. No way we're gonna fail two in a row, right? There's no, it's impossible. I know, I know, I'm, I know math, and I know failing a 70 percent check and then a forty-two percent check in a row, like that's that's impossible. It's not possible. See, exactly, exactly. Six kilometers southwest in the Valley of Dogs, Senior Officer Chad Tilbrook takes aim at a rabid black dog licking its wounds in the grass. To his left, his partner, Emil Mullins, whispers, You heard what happened to Tequila Sunset in Martinez? Yes, he lost his mind, Tilbrook answers, finger on the trigger. Don't worry, Emil, or Emil. He pulls on it slowly, slowly now. He'll find it again. We always do. What am I? You? You are an officer of the RCM, she says energetically. The Revachal Citizens Militia? Precise Mundo. Good. And what is the Revachal Citizens Militia? Nothing more nor less than the de facto law enforcement body of post-revolutionary Revachal detective. Yes, Lieutenant steps in to make a gesture encompassing you both. We are the Revachal Citizens Militia. He's being sarcastic. You said de facto. Yes, that means not de jour. The RCM acts in what is poetically called the twilight of international law, both at the behest of the coalition government and to its chagrin. What do you mean? The RCM's responsibilities are defined by the Emergency, Wayfair, and Alignment Elements Acts? Not ailments, Ele Elements Acts. Three pieces of legislation keeping the city in, let's be honest, laissez faire stasis to the bene be benefit of foreign capital. More fucking German. All three are good to know. The lieutenant looks up from his notes when we're out policing. So I'm basically a thrall of foreign interests. There's nothing basic about your role, detective. It's true that the RCM keeps everything the way we are seemingly permanent provisional rulers like it. She leans in. Yet on the other hand, I know these people. I deal with them daily. Let me tell you, dear, they are not fans of you. Why? The post-revolutionary decade was a disaster for the coalition government. Revachal in the 20s was hell, especially on the west side of the river. Gang warfare, botched privatization scheme, uh, nuclear pile meltdown. Okay, I gotta say, I'm surprised that, like, so far I, f I feel that... I feel like the, the, the company representative is a lot more personable, a lot nicer. I like this person a lot more than than the union boss. For a game that's so politically charged, like I'm I'm intrigued by that. Hmm. They called it the international zone because no nation wanted to claim responsibility. The RCM restored peace where the coalition failed. A true blue citizens initiative. She smiles. They will never forgive you. That's somewhat of an exaggeration, Lieutenant interjects. In reality, ours is a mutually beneficial arrangement. Revachalians get to keep the peace in Revachal, and the coalition doesn't have to worry about it. He coughs. Anyway, sorry to intrude. Please continue. Yes, Lieutenant, permit me to conclude with this. Who you are, to me, is the police, the only legitimate law enforcement authority in Revachal. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, so this is a lot of shit. Um, let's come back later when Kim's gone, and we will... Um, oh, let's do Everett Claire. You have, she smiles carefully, and how did you like Mr. Claire? I didn't. Oh, come on now. He has his uses. How else would he have stayed in power all these years? Oh, wait, actually, she answers her own question. He made me sit in a really uncomfortable chair, and I almost died of chair. He almost killed me with a chair. Corruption, that's how he's done it. Fantastic worm-like corruption reaching into the bowels of the earth. She looks at the ground and nods. The position of my unusual colleague does not reflect official policy. I hope you understand. The RCM does not pick sides. I do, of course, and I don't expect you to share anything he told you with me. I am not a corrupt worm myself. She turns to you. However, if you felt like discussing something, how could I stop you? Are we not human? Are we not curious to hear another person's take? It's only natural. We would only be, she smiles, gossiping. Intellectually speaking, it would be quite interesting to hear what she has to say about these things. Mr. Everard is helping me find my gun. Oh, her eyes become large and round. That's so helpful of him. The lieutenant looks at you and you can swear his jaw muscle is trembling. <laughs> when I said be wacky, I didn't mean wildly, grossly irresponsible and damaging to the RCM. Unconventional police officers sometimes lose their guns. Then they, they then go around and tell people about this to gauge their reactions. It's all part of detecting. Incredible, she shakes her head. Simply incredible. And how is it going? Has this detecting produced a gun? No. Well... Maybe he's not as helpful as you thought then. Is there anything else? I'd rather not talk about I'd rather talk about something else for now if you don't mind conclude. Of course, detective, she simmers down. Should something come up later down the road, don't be afraid to drop by for a chat. Alright, thank you. That's all for now. Alright, I wanna go get I wanna go get some fuel so we can paint a wall and then light it on fire. Let's make the world's first pyromaniac painting. Kim, can we have your fuel? No. Hey, do you have any fuel? Uh do you have anything to buy? No. What's this over here? Wow, a very large red t-shirt with an impressive print stands out from the other garb. Oh yeah? 
Oh yeah, the print depicts a muscled man striding towards you, a giant sword in each hand, encircled by burning embers. Behind him is a cluster of cabins engulfed in flames. Beneath him are the words, Hemdal Burnings. That's a, that's a rad man from Hemdal t-shirt you've got there. Hell yeah, man. The shopkeep sounds enthusiastic. I don't usually carry printed tees, but this was, this one was just such a pure exemplar. You must be a serious man from Hemdal, Hemdal fan. A fan? No, I wouldn't go that far. But I do think Hem Dollar Man Saga, the Hem Hem Dollar Man Saga, is an integral part of our shared reality. How much are you selling? Two real. Lieutenant raises his eyebrows. That's dirt cheap. Can you just give it to me for free then? He frowns. But why? The man from Hem Doll is a superstar. I'm a superstar. It would be perfect. He thinks about it. I suppose that makes sense. Yes. Please go ahead and take it. Welcome to Hem Doll. Nice. Free shirt. Free shirt. Oh man. Got Shivers, Physical Instrument, and minus two authority. Knockout measure head now? What, with the power of the t-shirt? We're just, we're gonna put our t-shirt on and we're gonna go and try and knock out the racist. That's what you want me to do, really? All right, we're doing it, we're doing it. Should we, should we put like a tool on? Pry bar and one hand, chain cutters in the other. Let's go. What could go wrong, chat? Did we talk to this guy? You're a scout, another member of Yeah, I'm a scout, pouring down, trot, and wave your fist right to work. I'm not a scout, I'm a cop, proceed. I was just messing with you. No one's ever seen a cop scab. Imagine, you cops going on a strike, but then another cop comes in and says, let us cop for less money. Everett said you have a key to a door. A key, huh? He runs his fingers through his mustache. What door is this key supposed to open? He said it belonged to a weasel. Oh, say no more, I got you. He taps the side of his nose with a little wink. I got that key right here, and let me tell you, it's mighty good of you to help us out during the strike, work, cl working class solidarity, and as I say, I'm not opening the store for myself, I'm opening it for all working men. I knew this man was a commie, he smiles, tilting his head, and it's a good thing you're doing it too, thanks. I'm more of a philosophical dock worker. <laughs> I like to talk about the big picture stuff, who I am, who you are, what we are fighting for. Why are you striking? We're negotiating our share. Your share? I. He seems pleased with himself. Right now, we want all the harbor workers to be on the company's board so they could take part in the decision-making process. This sed sed seditious talk sounds like communism, just so we're on the same page. Communis communism is basically wanting to kill the rich people or deporting them to a labor camp in Southeast Grad, but don't say that out loud if you're a communist. This is true. The boss man, Everett, what can you tell what can you tell me about him? I think it's best you make up your own mind now that you've met him. He shrugs. In my eyes, he's a capable organizer and decent businessman. The old man is corrupt for our benefit, and we know it. Appreciate it even. Besides, there are no non-corrupt systems in the world anyway, and moralism is the most corrupt of them all. This man has political theory, and it has not failed him today. Are you a communist? No, he pauses to think for a moment. I don't think I'm a communist. Seeing something of value and saying I want it all to myself is a much older and simpler notion. No science to it at all. It sounds like you're a communist who thinks he isn't doing enough to call himself one. See, I am primarily a lazy person. He looks very amused, as if thinking about some private joke or mystery. No doubt he's communist enough to call himself such, but he won't. Why is that? He likely believes that when someone has radical ideas, he should still rather present himself as a self-interested -inter moderate. Oh man, this guy has a Twitter account. Basically, you're a self-interested moderate. That's one way to call it, friend, he chuckles, an unnecessarily complicated way. Laziness, self-interest, and negligence certainly fit the doctrine espoused here. Is that the dulcet tone of an ultra-liberalism? Of ultra- of ultra-liberalism, I hear. At least some people are willing to make the necessary sacrifices in order to reach higher and to better the world. It all comes together now, the way he speaks about scabs, his general attitude. He's a follower of a 500-year-old Franco-Nigerian boy de Rio code, itself an appropriation of vespertine cool, that of a noble peasant or a traveling herdsman. True to yourself, independent in your actions, loyal to your friends. Maybe I am a boy de, de Rio. I, no, unless, no. The man sits on the railing, his hands reaching far and wide, yet it feels as if he could effortlessly go even wider if need be. An endless torrent of time. Any idea who killed the hanged man? He was an agent of the opposition attempting to undermine our honorable efforts. Did you kill him? I ain't the murdering type, but that's just me. Large organizations like our union have all sorts of men with all sorts of skills. He's not lying about not doing it himself. Understood, Lieutenant takes a note. This has been of limited use. Still, thank you. No problem. I wish the best to you in your search. Sure, I am glad it's not my search. He takes a sip from his flask. All right, let's get going. Let's go. Let's go. Fucking get our wrist broken by this guy. The unpromising race pupil return. Oh man, twenty eight percent. Twenty eight percent. We got a shirt on. Advice from scab leader. Don't know how that relates to anything. We bested him in craniometrics. 
Nope. <laughs> It has, it has happened again. The Titan has your fist locked is in his hand like and he's twisting it. The words to the song have changed. Say, I am a violent drunk. No, I won't fucking say anything. All right, damn. We just wasted two healing charges, chat. Okay, let's go look at the body. <clears throat> the corpse lies on the ground among the remains of an absolutely demolished pinewood branch. It's, jade, it's gently laid on one side. Well, it's down. Celebrate in a more reserved manner. Great job, wise race mentor. <laughs> To. Mr. Measurehead has done a good job, Lieutenant nods approvingly. Nothing is too broken or compromised. The victim is ready for a field autopsy. A field autopsy? No, you and I are detectives. The honorary rank of detective signifies our ability to handle the entire institute chain, from autopsy to cleanup to social work, everything. Wow, that doesn't sound good at all. I don't think I'm a detective. You are. Your station would not have assigned you on this case if you weren't. Now, Lieutenant adjusts glasses and takes a deep breath. First, what exactly is a field autopsy? Come on, officer. He pulls on a pair of latex gloves. You know what a field autopsy is. You've done a hundred of them. No, I haven't, Kim. You know this. What you do know is at 18.9 kilometers, the dormant shield volcano... What? The dormant shield volcano Corpus Mundi is the world's highest summit, and the failure of the 38 signal Et Pus de Sang to crack the top 20 was the death knell of Disco, but what a field autopsy is, you have no idea. Why don't, why don't you know? What use are you? You must have me confused with the copopedia. Who's the copopedia? I think I need to talk to him. You, sir, you are the copopedia. To tell you what, I perform the anatomical, anatomical, there we go, side of things while you will take notes. We'll just fill this in. Open your ledger at, a, at the field autopsy form. Tell me something, dead man. One, assistant, that's you. Coroner's case number. HDB41, blah, blah, blah. Help me out with the time of day, anyone? 1111. 11. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 1015. Good, let's go with that. Lieutenant is quite surprised you managed to come up with an adequate case number of name. And A next, date of birth, and A H. I'm gonna write 42, he nods. Six race, Mondial. Write it down. Sex. Fucky fucky, the little monster exclaims energetically, male. Pig's gonna have sex, right? Fucky fucky, right? Male. Date of death. We're still going with March 4th, 51. Nine. Body identified by is non applicable. Case number is the same as the coroner's case. Evidence of treatment. None, at least not after initial examination. What exactly is treatment anyway? Interfering with the body positions or wounds post mortem. Not so sure. Didn't the result was carried over? They'd have to have incapacitated and carried him over. This man was more than a match for untrained dock workers. He places a hand on the dead man's chest as if in preparation. Your central nervous system recognizes this gesture. It's the stations of the breath. Religious in nature, a holdout from pre DeLorean burial rites. It takes him two seconds to perform. Somewhere in Jamrock North, a small woodshed behind Rosencrantz Row, Lieutenant. Nick Feuerbach puts his hand to the chest of a small corpse, no larger than a monkey. It's raining outside, light drizzle. There is darkness in the shed. Elsewhere yet, an obese female sits in a wicker chair, her silhouette ball-like against the window. Outside, Grand Coron, the day is turning dim. For Sergeant Mac Torson, hand extended, he approaches to make sure she is dead more than anything else. And so, all across Jamrock, Coal City, G-R-I-H, 42 deceased persons found today, 42 stations of breath. We should start the postmortem. That was cool. Turn the page. External examination. Close, he begins. The deceased wears armored boots and white briefs. Yeah, the stormtrooper boots. Those are kind of weird. Write it down. The boot has a serial Design, number. He puts down. Tattoos. He stands up. Feet planted on either side of the body. Write write it down. The deceased has a belt for airlifting cargo around. Down. The deceased had male pattern baldness. Moving on, right down. Lividity is consistent with hanging. Right down. Belt is equally tied around the whole circumference of his neck. Gonna, this is gonna go real bad. This is gonna go real bad. Change shirt, I can't, I can't change my shirt in the middle of this, it won't let me. We're committed. Maybe we can level it up right now. Can we level it up right now, physical instrument? I mean, there are a couple other physical instrument checks we need to do, right? It's gonna make it what, go up to like 25% or something? We're, we're due, we're due for like a big win out of nowhere. This'll succeed. You jam the cutters right under the knot. That seems like a smart idea. Yes, yeah, somewhere there. Already they're buried deep in the man's flesh. Then you rotate them to get a better hold. Then enough, cut some. Let's cut. 
He steps in and takes the chain cutters from you. I should have a go before you before. I think I have a strategy. Let him work. He sinks the cutters into the knot, preparing to perform the cuts with his elbow to his knee for precision. Snap the knot. Oh, Kim saved the day. Nice. The rope rises to a point, he says, leaving a gap here to write right. it down. Chest is intact. He presses down on it. Normal contour. Abdomen is pro protuberant. Pelvis intact. Genitalia. He pulls down the man's underpants. Oh, here we go. Now it's going to happen, see? I fucking knew it. Genitalia is male and unremarkable, no evidence of injury. Inspect the genitals. Nah, I'm good, right down and move on. Back is symmetrical and intact. He struggles to turn the corpse on his side. Upper and lower extremities are intact, but asymmetrical. There are combat injuries on the right hand, thigh, and hip. Write it down. Last item, hands. Hands are clean, the lieutenant concludes. Honestly, the stench is making it hard for me to think at the moment. Write it down. Woo. He turns to the side to breathe. It's not enough. He buries his face in the sleeve of his jacket. You hear a muffled voice. That's all for the external. Well done. What next? Oh god, now we're doing internal examination. Central nervous system, he says, and then concludes abruptly. I have nothing. Do you have anything on this man's central nervous system? Of course, there's a moral to be drawn from it. A moral to the story. If I may add the moral of the story. All right, let's piss off Kim. What would that be? He looks at you inquisitively. The dead man looks too, with barely contained excitement to hear the moral of his story. The brain is very vulnerable to compromises in its blood supply. Lieutenant grins. I think that may be, they, that may well be the moral of every story officer. All right, N.A. Good. Must go skeletal. Purge fluid is coming from the mouth, not injury related, eyes and tongue. Remarkable. Write it down. Oral cavity shows no lesions. Yes. Look deeper inside. No, I don't want to throw up. Write it down. He wipes his brow. Pato biliary? Why don't we have anything? He looks at the corpse's stomach with a mixture of tiredness and disgust. Are you a, a hepto biliary expert? No. The completionist in me wonders if there's something we could still do. Like a toxicology screening? He looks at the monster. At this stage of doubt processing, we'll find anything, even if he was bringing with cocaine, but still you should add a request. Cardiovascular, the body exhibits heavy lividity. Blood has gathered in the hands, feet, and neck. Hypostasis is visually consistent with hanging right down. Gastrointestinal, he breathes a sigh of approaching relief. This is the last field on the list. He looks around to the ground, the pool of feces there. This will do. Then he touches the corpse bloated lower abdomen briefly and says, digested sem semi-solid food not fluid sorry in stomach vola write it down omit the vola i think we should have kept the vola fuck now injuries bite marks he nods head chest and scalp bite mark injuries ghouls gotta be predation by birds has caused damage to the body and your opinion officer beneath the description there are two boxes waiting to be ticked opinion fatal injury non-fatal post-mortem agreed next in injury contusions so <clears throat> the scalp bleeds from post-mortem head injury a stone the injury does not have the rim of an early inflammatory response the perpetra perpetrator on the scene has confessed to causing it post-mortem at maximum velocity fucko has confessed to causing it at maximum velocity write it down Coagulated blood sticks to his scalp and chest where the countless stones have hit the dead man. Beneath the description, injury two boxes, opinion fail injury, non-fatal, post-mortem. Right, next, lig ligature mark. Ligature mark. Finish the autopsy. A dark red abraded ligature mark encircling the neck with a gap on the nape measuring, let's say, 7 cm. The hyo bone is fractured, the cervical column intact. I see hemorrhaging on the skin above and below the ligature mark. Depth of the mark, 1 cm, no signs of clawing on the neck. Write it down. Below the note, two customary boxes wait to be ticked. The man's head jerks the side, awaiting your judgment. Uh, the ring around his neck is visible. I don't. I think. I think he was killed before he was hung. Opinion, non-fatal injury. That's it. He cracks an uneasy smile we've established cause of death oh whoops it's not much but leaves much to be it believes much to be questioned but it's a start he reduces a small black plastic roll from his jacket a body bag let's wrap this up i pronounce this field autopsy over first how did it go well stop oh i clicked wrong did i oh i'm sorry shit i didn't mean to do that Whoops, sorry. Well, it's so okay. fine. I don't think it's important. Well, we established probable cause of death, and some would say that's the goal of an autopsy. We also requested a toxicological screening that that was thorough. The results should arrive in a couple of weeks. If we're lucky, I would not hold my breath. What else? We were thorough with the list of injuries, too. We described them all in detail. What is there to say? Given the circumstances, it was a professional field autopsy. What now? Conclude. I need a copy of that autopsy form, then I will drive him to Fauborg. Rip out a copy of the autopsy pages. For processing, he looks at the dead man one more time, then at the slip of the red paper in his hand, then at the corpse again. He's thinking, did I miss something? I'm sure we didn't get everything. There's always something. Perception legendary. 14. Search the body one more time thoroughly. Let's bag him, taking him away. All right. 3%. 3% establish probable cause. Stop wasting time. You're smart. 3%. Damn. You run your hands over the victim's cold body, his limbs, his torso with its swollen organs. Maybe 
You should be more thorough. Look under his fingernails like Kim already did. His fingernails have turned dark. They're chipped and quite long. There's dirt under them, that's all. Do you think we missed something? You can't shake the feeling that there are more secrets concealed in the flesh before you. Yes, there's something we're not seeing. Okay, well, we're in liver mortis here. L what? He's disintegrating. We need to refrigerate the body if we want to conduct another examination. We need to do it fast. Can't he just hang out here for a while longer? Okay, where do we find a fridge for the body? I know where there's a fridge for the body. Hey, a wild smile appears on his face. Wasn't there a giant ice bear sarcophagus below, below that building? He points toward the commercial area. So that's what that ice bear shaped refrigerator is for. <laughs> Now that's an overstatement. It's not actually for storing cadavers, or at least I hope so. I think we should take a look at it first. Make sure it's big enough before we carry him over. He closes his notebook and cracks his neck. Let's move. With every hour, whatever we're looking for in the deceased will become harder to find. Do, 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 do. Okay, so we need to, we have two skill points. Uh, what do we need to punch the guy again? Should we get physical instrument? <laughs> Let's go punch that guy again. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm gonna save it, I'm gonna do it. And if I can't punch him again, then I'm gonna save scum. Let's go punch that guy again. Dun 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 dun. Punching time. I mean, I'm pretty sure that becoming a racist will make us more perceptive, right? Because you need to be really perceptive to make all those, those logical leaps to hate people. All right, here we go. Punching time. See, I'm promising. Oh, beautiful. 42%. Attempt number three. Yeah. Finally. Just like that, instinct took over. A solid strike straight into his throat, into the cartilage. You could swear you felt the soft plate break. The man is reeling, gasping for air. Time stands still around you. In the distance, the sounds of the harbor are falling silent. All you hear is a small gurgling sound as a trickle of blood appears on the man's lip. I, th I, th I think we're about to die. Um, wait, wait, what should I do? Rip into him with a right hook. Back up and perform a 360 flying spin kick. All right, we're in for a penny and for a pound. Fuck it. The man, the man lands with a dull thump like a broken down puppet of muscles and sinew. For a moment, he still tries to keep head, keep head up. Day's eyes looking at you with unimaginable surprise. To your left is the button. Disco and fern, <laughs> fern, baby. Fern. As you slam your fist on the button, the man collapses entirely. His head rolling to the side. Looks like you're the new measure head now. No one is the new measure head. Let's go before he gets up. The lieutenant makes haste toward the door. Wait, what did the button just do? Wait, what did I just do? Let's look in the crate. Oh, nice, we got some plastic tar. The man's still knocked out. He breathes slowly and steadily. Well, that was fun. Grad Factory of Magnets and Miracles U49. A lorry stuck in a traffic jam. This big, heavy grad-made machine is well kept for such an old machine. Look in the window. Racist nationalist paraphernalia. He grits his teeth. Not unusual in this part of town. This is our guide. Lieutenant nods toward the racist lorry driver. You think this lorry belongs to our tough guy? Oh, does that guy have any fuel? There was there was like a, a shop here that he had glasses, right? Hey, do you have any fuel? Plastic wrapped macaroni stamped with humanitarian aid. Humanitarian aid. This says food gift from the people of Messenia. The shine on those sunglasses lasts a lifetime, officer. 100% guarantee. Remember to the box. These are all boring, boring th third-rate ho-hum sunglasses made of cheap series plastic, the kind of plastic that melts in the sun. These- what? That's shitty plastic. Nah, I'm good. Do you have any fuel? They're clothes inside, cheap secondhand clothes smelling of strangers' Don't body be odors. Shy. These are premium class clothes. Save the economy with your style, officer. Save the economy? That sounds off. Save the economy? What are you talking about? Is this really the economy wants to leave our children? Oh my god, no. Okay, I don't want to do this right now. Look, man, I just want to buy some clothes. Yeah, let's leave for now. Fucking hell. All right, what's this? You see, two lowly defeated speakers thrall. Slaves basically perched atop them like conquerors surveying the land. A pair of fawn durable wear sneakers. Ultra I series. I can see you have a taste for luxury, officer. No, no, don't look at the speakers, officer. Look at the sneakers. The man points to the footwear. The sneakers are the stars here. Can I just buy the sad Concord Samaritan speakers? No way, officer. These aren't for sale. Where will the sneakers go? I can't leave premium lifestyle sneakers on the ground without the speakers. 
Those sneakers, mister, the street vendor intones. Those sneakers are the latest fallen sneakers. Super rare, super fine, super cool. Only 50 real. Fuck you, dude. Only? That's madness. How? We fucking made a statues? 50? What do you think of this fridge, Kim? It looks big enough for two corpses. It's certainly an eccentric choice, but it, but it is ca capacious and cold enough, too. But the optics on this are awful, he thinks. We need to be so as silent as we can. Your visual confirms you could fit two more bodies in the ice bear fridge. Nice, there's going to be more murders later. Shall we go and get the body then? I, I'll take the head, you take the feet, but the stairs won't be easy. The stairs won't be easy, but we'll manage. Okay, let's do this. Clap your hands. The body is heavier than you expected and sinkier. It takes half an hour to get it down to the basement, then ten more minutes to stuff it into the fridge. The lieutenant takes a step back to admire your handiwork. Really? Kim's going along with this? God damn. Beautiful, he says, wiping his hands on his handkerchief. A dead body in an ice bear fridge. This is some of the best police work I've ever done. Okay, Kim, are we like corrupting you and dragging dragging you down to our level? You have created an ice bear sarcophagus. Behold, we have created an ice bear sarcophagus. That's, that's a classic Yusuke. He nods gravely. Talk of the talk of the ice bear sarcophagus must not leave this room. This isn't police work, Kim. It's art. We're artists, and this was our vision. If I were an artist, this would certainly not be my vision. I would be much, much more conservative in my work. He's right. His work would be much more formal. At least <laughs> at least you stopped the body from decomposing further. Now you can conduct another inspection under controlled circumstances. In the icy realm of the ice bear fridge, the corpse stands slumped, waiting. Tell me something, dead man. How'd you like it in the fridge? I like it a lot, a lot, brother. This is really your finest hour. You're a genius. A regular Copalangelo. Copalangelo. Bag him. Taking away Kim. Let the lieutenant take the body away without further examination. All right, let's do it again. We can retry. No, we're just, oh, we, no, no critical successes at all this stream. This sucks, man. You touch the dead body's, the, the dead man's body. His skin is cold, light blue and silvery in the light of the fridge. You still have no idea where to begin or what, he, what even to do with him. Lieutenant rug, rugs his side for warmth. Rugs? Rubs? It'll come to you sooner or later. At least he's safer, safe here until then. All right. Wasn't this something about our wife? This one seems important. Let's see, Rowan. Let's reach, let's trace your drunken steps back home. Jump across the raised channel bridge southwest of here. Fall over. Get up. Get off the asphalt in 20 minutes. Shuffle your feet through the courtyard, scaring little children. Go under the great raised motor track, the 881, until you reach Le Domain Eminent in North Shamrock. The streets are streets are frozen this time of year, caked with ice. Walk down Main to Perdition. There's a side alley there, and your footprints in the mud. All right, this seems okay. Factual. Let's do this one. And someone in chat said this was worth it too. All right, so let's let's unlock. Let's get low some long way home. All right, we got this one. All right, get the bow collector too. Now, I think I want to see if I can open the thing with rhetoric. Okay, what do we need? Rhetoric. All right, I really want this open. I really want this to open. Let's get some rhetoric. All right, we are not playing this well, chat. Impossible. Impo okay, we're due. We're due. Come on, we're due. We're due. We're due for one. We're due for one. Yes! Despite the dirt that surrounds and trails you, a beacon of light emerges from deep within you. Hello, is any is there anybody in there? The door stands silent. Satisfied detective, a wry smile crosses Lieutenant's face. Try again. If there's someone in there, I'd like to talk to you. Just like that, you hear a click, then a rattle. Some mechanism unlocks itself inside the door. Mega rich light bending guy. From deep within the container, a voice. Ahoy, come on in. What? The smile disappears. You can't be serious. Nope. 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 All right, we'll do it. <sighs> what the fuck? The man stands at the far end of the shipping container. It's hard to say anything more about him. You cannot make out any of his details, but you do feel the overwhelming presence of capital. The feeling causes all the hairs on your body to stand at, at attention like soldiers preparing for review. Squint, cover your eyes, squint. Something's amiss. The light beams bend around his face and scatter in a thousand directions. It seems the laws of physics do not apply here. They are suspended, distorted, and echo. Trying to visualize the physics at play is liable to give you an aneurysm. Don't think about it too hard. 
In the general stillness, only your tongue moves, flickering as you utter, what's going on in here? Welcome, welcome, not too much actually, just pleasantly surprised to have company today. Kim, do you see this too? Kim, you can't hear him exactly, yet you're able to understand every word he says. It is very strange, an overwhelming hum covers everything, voice doesn't escape from him. Now, he clasps, clap, claps his hands together, what can I do for you gentlemen? What? What, can, what you can see of his body appears composed in a sharp somber suit and yak shoes. Who are you? Who am I? Oh, I haven't been asked that question for such a long time. There's, there's genuine surprise in his voice. I don't meet a lot of people outside my circle these days. Anyway, my name is Rostam Dior, Diodori. Rostam Diodor, are you a JoJo character? Investor, license holder, and extremely high net worth individual. And you are Mr. Diodori. Diodori, Dio. I am Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi of the RCM, and this is my partner. My name is Harry, and I'm a detective. Pleasure to meet you, Harry, he says warmly. Public service is a noble cause. What the fuck is going on? How, what are you doing in this container? Traveling? This is a great way to get around. It's fun, it's safe, it gives me lots of time to think. By the way, let me now ask you a question. Where are we exactly? In the very, very early days of colonizing the, uh, this archipelago, the kingdom of Serezni, a pr precursor of modern Serla Clef, used to own the city of Revachal, an obscure detail in the bigger picture, but still worth dropping. We're in Revachal, formerly a colony of the kingdom of Serezni. Ah, fellow history buff, I myself am currently reading up on Franco-Nigerian era trains. Very interesting stuff. It's a shame I can't get out and explore myself. One of the downsides of being an extremely high net worth individual is that mobs of low net worth individuals are constantly banding together asking me for money. So you're traveling, so you travel from place to place via shipping container. Smart, no? It also provides a means to hide from all the targeted advertising we extremely high net worth individuals are constantly subjected to. Luxury yachts, high fidelity portable radio systems, pale proof underwear, and so on. What? It just gets a bit middle class after a while, a bit bourgeois. Ah, so you're saying being rich isn't worth the hassle. What? No, I didn't say that at all. Being rich is great, just don't tell me when I told you that. The bending light appears to wink. Kim? <laughs> How did you become so rich? The man chuckles. To be perfectly blunt, I inherited my fortune from my grandmother, who herself was an extremely high net worth individual back in grad. All I did was take her fortune and invest it prudently. Believe it or not, it takes more than a bit of skill not to blow a vast fortune on sailing boats, bad choices, and unsupervised state policy. Actually, at the level this guy is, it takes several generations to do that, but alright. What's it like being an extremely high net worth individual? The man exhales with a whistle. I gotta tell you, at first, being rich is a lot of work. You've got to work hard because everything's so darn expensive. You know, prices increase exponentially at this income level. But then, once you've reached my position, it's nearly impossible for me not to make money. My assets are so diversified that I'm bound to come out ahead no matter what. Some of my lower net worth friends say to me, but doesn't that take all the fun out of it? And I tell them, not really. You're right. Capital ac accumulation. Don't you think you should use your great wealth for the glory of your fatherland? Which one? Revachal, where I nomin nominally reside, or Grad, where my father emigrated from? Or Il de Cashabrum Room, where I registered my shell companies? For Almighty Revachal, of course. Oh, probably Grad in that case. Yeah, that last one. Il de Cashabrum. Uh, for Almighty Revachal, of course. Listen, Harry, if capital and nationalism went hand in hand, there'd, be, there'd even be no need to ask the question. States are akin to boulders in a river, slowing the free flow of ideas. Given enough time, the water will wear those boulders down. Why are you in a shipping container? Man, it's being a high net worth individual sounds great. Why is the light bending around you? Yeah, it is, truly. It's almost entirely carefree, he nods. It really leaves you time to better yourself spiritually. Hey, hey, all this talk about money has made you lose the thread. What is going on with the light in this place? Exactly, that's what you need to ask me about. There's something strange about you. What do you mean? His essence seems to signify actual surprise. Well, I don't know how to put it. You look somehow a little different. Are you talking about my chin? No, no. I mean, I can't even see you. It's as if something is happening to the light. Oh, that's what you mean. Yes, I've heard of this effect, though. I've never witnessed it myself, of course. It has something to do with our wise, wise men coefficient. The wise wise man coefficient is a ratio designed to reflect the difference in net worth between individuals. When the coefficient is close to 1 or 100%, it means one person possesses all the net worth among the group of individuals. It's been observed that when the wise wise man coefficient reaches about 0.96 or so, the laws of physics begin to bend around the high worth net, and net worth individual. Almost said it properly. So what is our coefficient? The wise wise man coefficient for you and this individual appears to be 0.9998 repeating, of course. 
That's not good for you. Are you telling me that you are so rich that light literally bends around your face? Among other things, but calm down. I'm but a lowly single digit billionaire. Really? No, not really. There are actually quite many digits. Tim, are you seeing this weird stuff? I see nothing of the sort, to be frank. All I see is a gentleman who's unusually well dressed for Martinez in a cargo container, which I admit is odd. Kim, are you a secret billionaire? Yes, I imagine that does look strange to you, Mike my container. You're a rich investor, right? Can I have some money? I don't see how it's appropriate for a representative of the law to ask a wealthy person for money. This shines a bad light on the RCM if you catch my meaning. Come now. There is not even a cent of corruption here. I am merely being polite, so let me check my pockets. As you may know, us high net worth individuals do not have a lot of cash on hand. Investments and liquidity are enemies of one another. I think I only have coins for the coffee machines. Here's three real. How much can you get for this? Thank you for your kindness. You're welcome. You know, his eyes narrow. The light seems to bend more aggressively. Maybe you can make that money grow. Come up with an investment plan. How's that sound? <sighs> Conceptualization. Okay, can we come back? This is a red check, cannot be retried. We should let you get back to your investigation. Thanks for okay, let's let's come back. Let's put our conceptualization clothes on. Thanks for stopping by. If you ever have an idea you want to pitch me, I'm all yours. Alright, that was weird as fuck. All right, can we get our conception up? We can't, can we? It's already as high as it can go. I really want to see what it does. I want to save scum. Chat, I want to save scum. Chat, I want to save scum, chat. I want to save scum, chat. Chat, chat, I want to save scum. I want to see what happens. I want to, I want to see what happens. I want to be a Redditor. You know what? We don't need to save scum. We don't need to save scum because we're going to, we're going to win. We're going to win. Balls confirmed. Yeah, see? No, don't even have to save scum. Don't even have to save scum. The playing high concept. That, that was a joke, by the way. I wouldn't have saved scum if we failed. I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't have saved scum if we failed. The playing high con concept buzzword generator. All systems, systems functional. Ready to engage in a three, two, one. It's time to disrupt the future. You've got to stay lean, innovate, and focus on what waters most. The children. You should invest in youth culture. Huh? What kind of youth, youth center? A place to teach them practical skills like teamwork and self-discipline. Come on, tell him what he wants to hear. One dedicated to instilling liberal economic values in children from low net worth families. One to inspire the future leaders of tomorrow to public service. You know, a regular youth center with basketball courts and stuff to teach teamwork and other emotional skills. Okay, do I want to be an idiot? Do I want to be rich? Or do I want to be less rich? <laughs> One. Brilliant. Without children, who will who will be there to buy stuff in the future? Yes, if it doesn't work out, we can always repurpose the center as a shopping mall or private equity firm. When life closes a door, it opens a window, yes? What's the expected return on this? Highly educated, work-ready human capital ready to be directed toward any number of your vast interests. You're deep into ultra-liberal territory now. Good work. Ultra-liberal arc begins now. Very impressive. You've got a natural eye for unusual investment opportunities. Thank you. I don't normally do this without a formal pitch deck, but to hell with it. What's the point of being rich if you have to follow all the rules? Here's a round of seed funding. This should be enough to prove out the concept and get things off the ground. Thank you for placing your un unwavering trust in me. Thanks for the handout. Remember, it's not a handout. It's an investment, and I expect to see returns. So Lieutenant stands there dumbfounded, his mouth opens slightly, then closes again. Is he having a stroke? Kim, are you having a stroke? <laughs> no, I'm not having a stroke. You're just still full of surprises. Most of them bad, but some good. What the fuck was this interaction? What the fuck was this interaction? Shivers. Oh, it's you again. Are you looking for a die? I came back to pick up my die. Very good. That will be seven real for one custom die. Give her the money. Here you go. Item gained. Cursed Elamaran die. Pick up a die from dice from the dice maker. Here's the cursed die you ordered. The dice maker opens her desk drawer and hands you a tiny black sphere with six phrases written on it. Read the phrases. The phrases read, take all, lose all, 50-50, nothing happens, roll again, and God is indifferent. What is this? It's a die, confirms the die, dice maker with a subtle smile on her face. Try rolling it. Cast the cursed die. You throw the ball on the... F the ball on the floor. Ball? And it ends with one of the phrases facing upward. God is indifferent. She looks at the result. Good. Now, now, roll again, detective. Roll the die again. It lands on exactly the same result. God is indifferent, it declares again. It's a sphere pretending to be a six-sided die. Each roll will end with one of the phrases facing up. The die originates in Elmara, where it was used for claromancy. Except I've weighted the die, so... Sorry, when you try rolling it, you realize that each time it gets you exactly the same result. God is indifferent. This is our curse. 
Nice. It's even worse than she says, God is dead, we live in a forsaken age. You're saying that the end result doesn't matter. In the face of death, no, not really. What a relief. It is, isn't it? There's something liberating about knowing it's just we humans, not all powerful forces guiding us, watching us, judging us. Can I get a normal version of this die, one that isn't modified to land on a single single result? No, I don't have another die. You'll have to have to do with this one. I guess I'll keep the die then. Good luck, officer. She says with a mischievous smile before turning back into. Well, why can't I do this again? Cast the curse of Marion die. What? Look at the map tab in general to see which white checks have opened. Interface challenging. Okay, so a lot of stuff has, has, has we can retry some of them because we got it. Huh? All right, let's try it again. 20%. Damn, thought we were on a roll. Turns out we're not. Physical instrument, lift the barbell. Here we go again. 17%. Nope. It's a nice, uh, nice Jojo meme here for you chat. Thank you, Moxus.